shocking news of ice holding evidence of ancient, massive solar storm city inside Earth. There are many scientific things that we ought to believe in until we see the scientific proofs of them, such as evolution, ancient history, dinosaurs, old spices, and many other things. And solar storm is one of many disasters that have occurred since the formation of our mighty Earth. At a time when the Earth was just being formed and the Sun was unstable, the heat waves from the Sun were able to create something which had never been seen before. So, are you excited to know more about it? Then, switch this video to full screen and watch this video till the end. Hello everyone! Welcome back to the Tech Universe. Before starting don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get more updates on the space and tech world. That being said, let's begin. Life on Earth is dependent on the Sun in order to survive. However, our life-giving companion can also cause problems on occasion. During periods when there is strong activity on the surface of the Sun, more energy is released, and this can result in geomagnetic storms. As a result, there may be power outages and communication disruptions. It is difficult to predict solar storms in advance, but at the moment, it is believed that sunspot formation is more likely to occur during an active phase of the Sun or solar maximum, during what is known as the sunspot cycle. However, a new study published in Nature Communications indicates that the case may not always be the same for very large storms. In the year 7176 BC, an analysis of radioactive chemicals and ice cores indicates that one of the most powerful solar storms ever recorded hit the Earth over 9,000 years ago, at a time when most of our ancestors were wearing animal skins the northern skies would have been bright with flickering lights for a brief period of time. A massive solar storm of unprecedented size had just taken place around 7176 BC, according to chemical isotopes in ancient ice cores, and it would have been noticed by people living in that time period. According to Raymond Mustler, professor of geology at Sweden's Lund University, we know that most high-energy events occur in the context of a geomagnetic storm, so it's likely that there were visible auroras. Mustler is the senior author of the paper that was published by Nature Communications, reporting evidence for the ancient event that resulted in a massive flux of high-energy particles or gamma rays striking the Earth. During this period, radioactive varieties of beryllium and chlorine were formed in the atmosphere, which then fell to the ground with a seasonal snowfall during the period and was preserved in layers of ancient ice. Almost certainly, the cause was a solar storm with protons, electrons, and ions that caused a solar energetic particle to fall to the Earth's surface, called a solar energetic particle, SEPS, although galactic gamma ray bursts and supernovae would have left similar chemical signatures on the ice. As a result of examining ice cores from several drilling projects in Greenland and Antarctica, the researchers have completed a difficult and time-consuming task. It was found that the researchers scoured the drill cores in search of peaks of the radioactive isotopes beryllium-10 and chlorine-36. There are high-energy cosmic particles that reach the Earth and are deposited in ice and sediment, and these particles can be preserved in the Earth's surface. Raman Mushtler said that this is time-consuming and expensive analytical work. Therefore, we were pleasantly surprised when we found such a peak, indicating a hitherto unknown giant solar storm in connection with low solar activity. And in today's world, if a similar solar storm were to occur today, it would have devastating effects. Additionally to power outages and radiation damage to satellites, it could also pose an imminent danger to air traffic and astronauts, and can lead to the breakdown of various communication systems. Raymond Mustler concludes by saying, These enormous storms are currently not sufficiently included in risk assessments. It is of the utmost importance to analyze what these events could mean for today's technology and how we can protect ourselves. During the study of ice cores from both regions, they detected three SEP events which were known to have occurred in AED 993 or 994, in AED 774 or 775, and in 660 BC, and which were all related to solar storms at the time. The scientists also found evidence of another significant SCP event that had gone unrecorded until now, an event that took place around 7176 BC, or about 9,200 years ago. Since the strength of the solar storm was able to be estimated by using beryllium and chlorine radioactive isotopes, they determined the storm in 7176 BC had such a severe impact that a storm of such intensity today could have disastrous effects, including knocking out satellites in orbit, disrupting communications networks, and cutting off power lines. 
Mustula relates that the events known to have occurred in the past 70 years, for which we have instrumental data, were all much smaller than they are now. He noted that these ancient events were about 10 times larger. The researchers report that one puzzling aspect of the 7176 BC solar storm was that it occurred during a supposedly quiet phase of the 11-year solar activity cycle, known as the solar minimum, a period when solar storms are not expected to occur. As a result, current risk assessments do not properly account for this possibility and warn against doing so in the future. The study of solar physicist Dean Pesnell, a NASA employee with the Goddard Space Flight Center, points out that the storm of 7176 BC has nothing to do with the actual minimum of the sun, but rather the beginning of a new solar activity cycle. In addition, Pesnell, who is the project scientist of the Solar Dynamics Observatory, said that storms can occasionally occur at the end of the decreasing phase of the solar cycle, which may result in solar flares. He stated, they're not typical, but they're not unexpected either. As a communications specialist for the Solar Terrestrial Center of Excellence in Brussels, which coordinates international studies of the sun, Jan Janssens agrees with Pesnell that solar storms can occur at the beginning or at the end of a solar activity cycle. He said in an email that it's possible. Clearly, that doesn't happen too often and certainly not during a solar cycle minimum, but it apparently does once in a while. And if by chance, the solar storm did not occur during the solar minimum period, but instead occurred at the start of a new solar cycle, that would undermine the researchers' claim that such storms can occur at that time and are not being taken into account properly. There is a solar activity cycle because of the entanglement and disentanglement of the sun's powerful magnetic fields. Solar storms in sunspots are more common at the cycle's maximum points and less common at its minimums. Professor Mary Hudson, an expert in solar storms and professor of physics at Dartmouth College, says that if the storm that occurred in 7176 BC happened around a time when the sun experienced a minimum, it might have been more severe than usual as a result. As a result, storms near a solar maximum may be less severe than usual as a result, even though they are more frequent. Some scientists dispute the existence of this phenomenon. However, since they do not understand the solar mechanism that drives it, it should be noted that Hudson, who was not involved in the study, also pointed out in an email that the powerful solar storm observed by astronomers back in 1859, called the Carrington Event, also occurred at a time when the sun was at a minimum, as did the powerful solar storm of 774 or 775. As far as we know, solar storms have not had a great impact on the modern world. Janssen's noted that these types of explosions can damage satellites, threaten the health of astronauts in space with bursts of intense radiation, and interfere for many hours with the radio signals used in communication networks and to guide ships and aircraft. Additionally, they can cause damage to power grids by creating unexpected electrical currents that can overwhelm the transformers on a grid. Solar storms have caused some of the most severe blackouts in recent memory, including the Halloween storms of 2003 that blacked out parts of Europe for several hours and damaged transformers in South Africa. A particularly intense solar storm in 1989 also blacked out parts of Quebec, Canada. Yet Pesnell pointed out that, in recent years, power companies have become more aware of solar storm risks and have been hardening their equipment against the effects of the storms. So, yeah, we're not totally but kind of prepared for this kind of situation. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Tell us in the comments. And that's it for the day, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe, peace.